All right, hey guys, it's Paul from Team APS. So I'm going to be profiling witchcrafters with the new support that comes out of Eternity Code. So Eternity Code released, technically, just about a week ago, and uh, witchcrafters got two new cards, Unveiling and Patronus, which I will talk about when I get to them. But anyway, witchcrafters themselves, very fun deck. I've been playing this for quite a while. It's not going to be beating any meta decks, so, you know, it's just a, a fun profile. I like the aesthetic, and that's really cool. So... Yeah, three Witchcrafter Shmieta. This is the one that, like all of them, you can you know, attribute it and send a spell, summon any Witchcrafter you want from your deck. So this deck's actually great at getting the things it needs out in the field, as long as you see any one of them. She's special, though, because she's also a Foolish Burial, so you can banish her from your graveyard and send another Witchcrafter spell, or card, actually, from your deck to the graveyard. Usually it'll be a spell, although now there's kind of a reason that you might want to send their trap instead, so... She's nice. Next is Witchcrafter Pator. So Pator is uh, similar, sort of, like she basically can banish and then you get to draw a card and discard a card. You have to discard a Witchcrafter card, of course. And so what I like about her is that it's a little bit of draw power. It lets you empty out a Witchcrafter from your hand that you might not really need and you'd prefer in the grave. You could revive it with Witchcrafter Holiday, or you could just send a spell because the spells can always come back to your hand in the end phase. And although that's slow, it is advantage that you will get back, so that's a nice thing about her. Be careful though, uh, I do run Pot of Extravagance, and if you are running it, then you won't be able to use her effect after you use Extravagance because you can't draw that turn. Next is Witchcrafter Jenny. Now I'm running two of this, although with the release of Patronus, I'm thinking about adding a third copy of Jenny, but for now, just two. She, like all of them, can summon them from your deck and all that, but she can banish herself from the graveyard along with a witchcrafter spell to apply that spell's effect, which would basically allow you to use one of your spell's effects twice in one turn. And it's especially useful if you have two copies of a spell in your grave because you'll never be able to add two back to your hand. So, like, this is good for getting another search with witchcrafter creation, that sort of thing. And finally, our boss monsters. So we've got witchcrafter Madam Vera. Obviously, she is best girl. This thing is surprisingly resilient. You'd, like, you'd be shocked at how many games you can win by just kind of sitting on her. 2800 defense, you can shut down all your opponent's monster effects, and um, also like beef up your monsters during damage calculation. She can be extremely annoying to deal with, especially when paired with Witchcrafter Golem Aruru. So this sits in your hand, and basically if your opponent targets any of your spellcasters for an attack or um, a card effect, you can activate Golem, and then you can return either one of your opponent's cards to the hand, or one of your Witchcrafter spells from your graveyard to your hand. So, it's a good multi-use. It will bounce back to your hand during your opponent's next standby phase. So it's not going to stick around for very long, but while it's on the field, it's a good beater, and then when it comes back to your hand, it can be useful for defense again. So, this plus this can start to like get really, really annoying for your opponent alongside some certain other cards. So, um... Then I've got two Witchcrafter Hanes. This is just the go-to kind of thing. It's like Zodiac Dryden. You can pitch a spell, pop a card. Also, it stops your opponent from targeting your other spellcasters. So yes, they can target her, but no, they cannot target anything else. And that, with Madame Vera, can also get increasingly annoying for your opponent. Next is the spells. I guess I should move these monsters out of the way. Um, now... I'll go ahead and say right off the bat, I'm not running Spell Chronicle. I know that's a very popular card right now with Patronus, but I don't like it because it's not searchable, so I don't find it reliable. So before you ask, that's the situation with that. Anyways, three Witchcrafter Creations. One day I'll get Secret Rares, but for now it's going to be Ultras. Witchcrafter Creations searches any of your Witchcrafters, and like all of your Witchcrafter spells during the end phase, if you control a Witchcrafter, you can add this from your graveyard to your hand. Now, you have to be careful because you can only use one of its effects per turn. So if you search with this, you're not going to be able to get it back until your very next end phase, which can make this deck really quite slow. But once you've used it once or twice, you usually don't need to, and then you can start pitching it, getting it back for free. The nice things that you expect out of this deck. Then there's the new card, Witchcrafter Unveiling. So Unveiling is really fun. Um, it lets you summon a Witchcrafter monster from your hand, and then if you do, your opponent can't activate any cards or effects in response to any of your spellcaster monsters' effects for the rest of the turn. What that basically means is that if you've got a dead hand in your hand, you can summon it, and also you can even use its effect, and they won't be able to chain to it. The same goes for, like, you know, a dead um, copy of, like, Madame Vera in your hand. You could just summon that out. It's pretty cool, and anytime you don't use it, it will just recycle like all the rest of them. So I find this card pretty fun. I also like that you can um, 
OTK your opponent pretty easily with it. Like if you, if they don't see it coming, you can just sort of activate this and summon another one from your hand and then it's like poof. So it's a quick play spell. You could even use it in your opponent's turn as defense, but that doesn't really come up because you'll typically prefer to keep it in your hand, but different situations arise. Um, two holiday. I think I was running three of this in my old build, but I decided to cut it down to two because I have to fit unveiling in. And you could really probably run two unveiling if you wanted, but I'm running three because I want to get the full new card experience. Um, yeah, holiday is the monster reborn. That's all there really is to it. Draping. This doesn't get used much because back row is not a huge part of the meta these days. Like it can be okay against Eldritch, and it could be good against like maybe Alter Geist now. I don't know. But generally speaking, um, draping is just going to be discarded and added back and discarded and added back over and over and over. But it does target spell and traps your opponent control up to the number of witchcraft or monsters and bounce them all to the hand. Because it's a quick play spell, this can be useful. You could do this like on your opponent's end phase if they were, you know, paleo, altar guys, guru player, something like that. And that would be really nice to basically let you make your plays next turn uninterrupted. So anyways, witchcraft or by street and scroll. These are the two continuous ones. Instead of returning to your hand in the end phase, they return to the field, and you can send them from the field and treat them as if they were discarded for a witchcraft or monster's effect. Um, it's best to send these in your opponent's turn so that they can, you know, revive themselves like normal during the end phase. Anyways, by Street protects each of your witchcraft or monsters once from destruction, that's battle or card effects. And Scroll, if you're a witchcraft or monster, destroys a monster or battle, you get to draw a card. Drawing a card's nice because this deck can sometimes use the hand advantage, but generally if you're already, like, winning then you don't need it but by street's extremely useful again it's one of those things that like when you combine it with golem aruru and like hane and like madame bear you can really get some annoying little things going where your opponent just can't deal with all of your cards draw power is triple pot of extravagance this card's getting reprinted i don't think it's going to be much cheaper though if you cannot afford this fear not you could run a number of other cards Spell Chronicle might be worth looking into for gaining a lot of advantage, but also you could run like just Upstart Goblin. I've even seen people try out Pot of Desires, and I know that sounds risky in here, but the truth is once you've like gotten maybe a couple of Witchcrafter spells in circulation in your grave, I wouldn't be afraid to just use a Pot of Desires because whatever gets banished, doesn't matter. The spells will start recycling themselves, so it's not a big deal. Reasoning, you can just summon like literally, oh, there they go. Any of your witchcrafter uh, monsters, and basically, I eh, gotta pick these cards up. And, anyways, basically, you could just summon it from your deck, and that's always cool. And it's also a spell, you can discard it if it's dead. Called by the Grave, you absolutely have to run this card. I think that it is, you can't compromise on running this card. You need to stop Ash Blossom. Ash Blossom is the number one threat to this deck. If you have to send your witchcrafter monster and a spell to your grave, and it gets Ash, you will probably lose. This deck can get no momentum beyond that. You need to protect your witchcrafters and make sure that their effects resolve. It is absolutely essential. No compromises. You could even, I mean, I've seen builds that run like Gamma and like, you know, like Cyframe Gamma just to stop Ash because you won't have a monster in the field when you tribute your witchcrafter. So Ash is the bane of this deck. Instant Fusion, it's still one of. You can grab your Thousand Eyes Restrict or Millennium Eyes Restrict. Millennium Eyes Restrict being another way of um, stopping Ash Blossom. So if you think your opponent has Ash, Summon this, you can stop an ash. Very handy. Now, next I'm running some spells that I said in my last build these were experimental and I've just kind of kept them in. It's three Book of Moon and three Forbidden Chalice. Now, these cards really could be other things. These could be ash blossoms or something. These could be impermanence. These could be, you know, like traps like Summon Limit or Rivalry. I like having extra spells because you never know when you'll need them. I would have run Lightning Storm, but don't really have access to that right now. So these kind of get the job done. Book of Moon can be a really good control card. It can stop link plays by flipping something face down. And Chalice is effectively an impermanence, but it's a spell, so it can be used with some of your Witchcrafter monsters' effects. Now, I do, there are some advantages to cards like this. Even though this can't be used from your hand, like in your opponent's turn, you can use it from your hand in your own turn, unlike impermanence whenever you have like a thing on the field. So that can make Verdant Chalice quite nice. It can let you swing over stuff. You can use it in the damage step. And it's ultra rare. Who wouldn't like that? And finally, our three Witchcrafter Patronus. So this is the new trap card for these wonderful ladies. This thing is pretty good, actually. You basically can shuffle one of your banished or engrave Witchcrafters into your deck and get a Witchcrafter spell. 
once you've done this twice, it's already paid for itself, and they will always like be circulating. So this happens a lot. When it's in your grave, you can banish it and get back as many of your banished witchcrafter spells with different names from your um, banished stone to your hand as possible. So, um, yeah, this is actually really good with Spell Chronicle. Like I said, I'm not running that in this build, but you could. Either way, it's very useful. You can accumulate a lot of advantage. And even when this dies, it works extremely well with Ginny because she will be banishing spells. So that's pretty much the main reason to be kind of using it. Or if they get banished in any other ways, you can get it back with this. So very good card. Um, it sucks that they had to make it a trap. It kind of makes it a little slow, but eh, you know, whatever. It, it gets the job done. All right, so that's the main deck. And the extra deck barely matters. There's only two important cards in here. And I'm running like multiples of each. Thousand Eyes Restrict, out stuff. Millennium Eyes Restrict, stops Ash. Everything else is just filler. Uh, you won't summon any of these things. It's just for Pot of Extravagance. And that is the Witchcrafter deck. So hopefully you guys liked it. Um, I think that this deck is a lot of fun. It's, like I said, just fun. It's very slow. It has issues like that. But it's just it's an enjoyable time to play. And a fun fact you might not know about these things is that the, the Witchcrafter name is actually because they craft the weapons that the Endymion monsters use. So there's your bit of Yu-Gi-Oh trivia for the day. All right, anyways, if you liked the video, thumbs it up, subscribe, check out some other deck profiles. Hopefully we'll have some more coming. And let me know how you've built Witchcrafters, all that stuff, down in the comments. See you guys in the next one. Pass turn.